Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print on demand designs that sell. And if you stay tuned till the end of the video, I have another five bonus niches for you. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create this style of design here. This is a nice, simple, minimalistic uh, style. This one just happens to be a cat with a heartbeat. Of course, you can use this technique and do it with just about anything. It doesn't have to be a cat per se. This is my design here. I'm on Amazon. And so you can see the brand is Therapy Designs. And I just put cat heartbeat, cat lover design. Um, and so pretty simple in terms of what I used for the SEO. But I'm going to show you guys how you can do this using Canva and uh, Photopea. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump onto Canva really quick here. And we're going to start with a blank template. So we'll go to custom size on the right hand side of the page. I'm going to select 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. That is the standard t-shirt size. And it will ensure that when it's printed, it will print at above a 300 DPI. I do prefer to optimize all of my designs uh, for the darker color shirts as they do tend to sell best. So I usually just go ahead and set my background color to black. And then this is a, like I said, very simple design. So there's no words in it. We're just going to use graphics. And so I'm going to go over to elements and we're just going to start with a heartbeat. And so pretty easy. And we can hit seal. And there's all sorts of different heartbeats that we can use. For example, here is one that already has a little heart inside of it. And so we can essentially just duplicate this. But instead of the heart, we put the cat. And I might just go ahead and use this one because that seems like the simplest thing to do. So I do like this one. So I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take this one. I'm going to hit Control D. So I've got two copies of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to crop each one just to get rid of the heart. So on this top one here, I'm going to go to the box here where you can see it says crop. I can click on that. And then I'm just going to go ahead, take this, and I'm dragging straight across to cut out the heart. And I'll just go ahead and let go there. And it's going to cut the heart out that way. And then I'm going to take this one. I'm going to go to crop. And I'm going to go from the other end. And I'm going straight across in order to cut out the heart on that end. And boom. So now I've got two ends. And I can line those up there. So now I've got my perfect spot in the middle where I'm going to go ahead and put that um, cat in there. So now what I can look for is cat outline. And I'm looking for something that I can do where I'm going to have the top half of the face. Um, so ideally something where the cat is looking forward. So something like one of these would do something like that. And what I do is essentially cut off the bottom of the body. You want it to be as simple as you can make it. I mean, that one's pretty simple. That one actually there might work well. Um, and you might just have to look through. This one works really well. This might actually be the one that I used because it looks really simple. So let's go ahead and make it so I can see that. And actually, yeah, I think that that one's going to work just fine. So if you can imagine my shrinking this cat down here and making him fit perfectly in here, that might actually work best. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cat we're going to crop the cat. So I'm going to hit crop. And we're going to crop off essentially the whole bottom of the cat. So I can do something like that. If I want to keep the nose in there, I can try to just crop it right there. So I've got the nose and I can use my arrow keys. So I'm just hitting the up arrow on my keyboard to raise that cat up so that it's going to line up perfectly right there. And so now you can already see the way that that looks. And so that's pretty cool right there. Um, if I wanted to maybe make it so that, cause there's not a lot of space between the cat and this side, and there's a little bit more space here, I could take this and just play with the cropping a little bit more. So maybe I make that line just a little bit shorter because now I wanted to put a little tail coming out there and I can use a tail from a different cat. So it doesn't have to be the same cat. So now I'm just looking for the tail. So that could be a good tail right there. Um, any cat that has a good tail. Actually, I think I might have used this tail. This tail looks pretty good. So you can see the tail on this cat. Essentially, what I would do would be put the tail something like that. Now I can shrink it down a little bit. 
I could even flip it. So if I wanted it to go the other direction, I could flip horizontal so that the tail is curving in a little bit more, something like that. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to crop the cat out. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit crop and I am, oops, you know what? Hold on. Let me flip that back. So little caveat, you'll have trouble cropping it if you've already flipped it. Um, so what I've noticed is once I flip it, it doesn't usually like to let me crop it easily. But if I keep it in its normal orientation, then it lets me crop it easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and then crop first. So cropping out the cat's body, pretty straightforward. I can crop it down so it's a little easier to work with and then crop it up to whatever length I like. So I'm looking at something like that. There is my cat tail. And then from here, if I wanted to, I could flip it so it's going the other direction. I don't have to, I can have it go any direction that I like. Something like that might work good. Or if I wanted to, I'm thinking maybe keep more of it. Let me flip it back. I might actually keep a little bit more of the tail so I get a little bit more of that squiggly line. So maybe I'll do something like that. So that looks kind of cool. Bring it up. And so there, that, that actually works really well. So I like that. And of course, I didn't have to use that tail. You can use any tail you want. Any tail will do. You just want to kind of get that basic sort of wavy shape. And so I could have done a straight tail. You know, here's another one here that has sort of that S sort of look to it if you wanted it to be more of a solid tail versus an outlined tail. So here's a tail that it's just a cat tail. And there's nothing else to it. So that would have worked well too. So anyways, I've got this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to group this all together by highlighting over everything, hitting group. So now this is one image. I'm now going to make that image nice and big across the screen. And what this is essentially going to be is a frame that I can put a mask on. Not that you couldn't use it like this um, and just do solid colors if you wanted to, but I'm going to show you how I kind of got that sort of a blotchy rainbow look. So I'm going to start by just going ahead and putting cat frame. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to hit share, download. It's going to be a transparent background. It's a PNG. And I'm just going to go ahead and download this. So this is going to be my frame. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put sort of a rainbow splatter mask on it. Um, and so all we're going to do is just add sort of splatter colors around it. So pretty easy. I'm going to go to just paint splatter or splatter. And we're looking for just random colors. So this one's kind of cool because it's already got a lot of random colors in it. So, I mean, I could just sort of hit control D. I got to make sure that everything is covered up. And of course I can rotate these different directions so that the splatters are going different ways. Essentially what we want is to make sure that every part of that is covered. And so hopefully I don't see any red through here. I think I've got it all covered and that's just gonna make my mask. So then I could do cat, cat splatter mask. And then we're gonna go ahead, hit share, download. It doesn't need to be a transparent background for this one because this is just going to mask over the frame that we made, which is just going to be right in here. So we can just download this one exactly as is. And by the way, you could have done your own splatters too to pick your own colors. So I could have just done a bunch of them with just individual ones and picked my colors. This was just kind of quick and easy because there was already a bunch of colors there, but you can do it however you want. And you didn't have to do a splatter if you didn't want to. You could have done a gradient. You could have done all sorts of different things, but there's an easy mask. Now I'm going to jump over to Photo P, which I just noticed today changed to Photo Pickle, which is weird. It's still photop.com, but now it says Photo Pickle. So there you go. That's kind of funny. 
Um, but this is totally free to use. So if you haven't used it, all you have to do is literally type photop.com into your browser. You should come up with a page that looks like this. You don't have to create an account or anything. So you just go ahead, hit open from computer. That's going to pull up your downloads. From here, we can go ahead and start with our cat frame and hit open. And it's just going to pull up your frame right there. And then what you'll do is you'll go to the top left hand side of the page where it says file. We're going to hit open in place. That'll pull up your downloads again. There you can go ahead and hit your cat splatter mask and hit open. And it's going to put your mask right on top. So now what we should have is the mask is sitting on top of the frame. So this is what it should look like. And then from here, we're going to go over to the top where it says layer. About halfway down, you'll see something that says clipping mask. Go ahead and click on that, and it's going to put the clipping mask right over. And so you'll end up with your cool cat like that. And then from here, we just export. So we can go to file. Halfway down, it says export as. You'll hit PNG. Give it a second, a box will pop up for you. So here's my box. Here's where we could retitle it if we wanted to. So I could put cat heartbeat. It's still a PNG, it's still 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. You really don't have to do anything else. You can just hit save and that's it. That's all you needed photo P4. It really should have been that fast, that easy, that free. And then we can just jump right back over to Canva. And so it's just that one little extra step to get that clipping mask on there. And that is the fastest, easiest way that I know how to do this. Um, Obviously, when it comes to designs, there's a thousand ways that you can get something accomplished and there's different ways that different people use. I'm just showing you the way that I do it and the way that I find to be the absolute fastest, most efficient, easiest way to do it. So if you have other ways to do clipping masks, that's great, but I can't find anything faster and easier and freer than that. So that's what I like to use. Anyways, from here, what we can do is we can upload that design. You don't have to at this point. It could be ready to put on a shirt, but if you want to upload it, we can go to upload files and it'll pull up your downloads and we can get our cat heartbeat and open that. And then I can add a page here, pull up my cat heartbeat so that you guys can see what it looks like. And so if I was to go ahead and just line it up and spread it across the page, you can see that is what it looks like. And so that is it. That is the design that's ready to go on a shirt. And you don't have to bring it back here if you don't want to. You can bring it back here if you want to add something to it, if you wanted to add text or anything. Otherwise, um, what you downloaded from Photopea would be perfectly good enough to go up on um, any platform you use for printing, whether that's Amazon or whether it's something like Printful or Printify or any of the other print companies. Um, but it is ready to go. So pretty quick, pretty easy design. And again, I showed you with a cat, but it doesn't have to be a cat. It can be just about anything you want. Heartbeat designs are always relatively popular. And by adding the little clipping mask, that just makes it stand out. It makes it a little bit more unique than just the standard, you know, heartbeat ones. So you can find all sorts of different creative ways that you can play with this. Um, and because you guys were so patient again and waited until the end of the video, I do have another five bonus niches for you. And I went ahead and just decided to go with what is trending on Amazon right now. Um, so, okay, so here we are, your five bonus niches. And these are what are currently trending on Amazon in the top, let's say 100 selling t-shirt designs. So number one, dare to be yourself and of course this can sell year round but this one was specifically targeted towards autism acceptance month because it is autism acceptance month um number two it's okay to be different again can sell year round but specifically targeted towards autism acceptance month number three rock the test um, there are a lot of like test shirts being sold right now for any end of the year tests that uh, kids have usually it's in elementary school but of course you can have any kind of test shirt i've seen this is my lucky test shirt do not wash things like that number four uncle the man the myth the bad influence again a nice good evergreen i have no idea why it's in the top 100 uh this week but it was so there we go and then number five brave enough to bloom wherever we land i really liked this one it showed a dandelion being you know blown in the wind 
And so I thought that that was a really awesome design there that was also selling really well right now. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. If you have video requests, again, you can throw those in the comment section below and I try to get you added to my list. If you haven't yet downloaded the free evergreen niche list, I do have that um, in the description at the top of the description under this video. It is totally free. So you can do that and download that. And I have um, niches for the year and um, a bunch of evergreen niches that you guys can use. Um, other than that, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope your sales are doing well. I hope you're continuing to grow, expand your portfolio, learn new skills, all that fun stuff. I am still working on that uh, complete uh, print on demand course, and I'm hoping to get that done in the next couple of months. Um, and I just hope you guys are doing good. I hope to see you again. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.